Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon uh, to to everyone. Um, just a brief update on the IAG uh, IERS joint working group uh, on on site survey and co-location. Um, I would say, you know, as a as a mainly field based group, um, we've we've kind of been hampered by the past year and a half. Though it's pretty exciting to use the use the time to uh, continue what we can and also uh, gather some some new membership. So. Um, uh, colleague uh, Xavier uh, Kalu, uh, when when uh, he and Zahir were were gathering um, submissions and and data for ITRF, they they took the step to uh, respond to folks um, who had submitted and uh, that that may not be in this working group uh, that were submitting tie surveys and kind of reached out. So we've actually added colleagues and connections uh, to this working group, um, active members uh, from Spain and, and New Zealand. Um, updated contacts from from GA and um, and and have um, some outreach to uh, colleagues we've made some connections with uh, potential colleagues in Japan so um, many many of the existing members are, are from kind of the the last version of the working group uh, prior to sort of uh, realigning some goals uh, at UAW 2019 um, but we have some new members and and that's really great so we're we're really encouraged by um, by you know bringing um, uh, new, new active members in and, and looking forward to, to some of the activities and research that they're doing. Um, so, and, you know, th this year has been a bit of a struggle, unfortunately, for us as we kind of continue to watch conferences and gatherings get canceled. So um, we're working on how we could structure, you know, sort of regular meetings, um, maybe at different um, times of day to address the fact that, you know, uh, I am I am half a day away from uh, you know, around the world, literally from from half this audience. So, um, we'll we'll try to keep working on that and see if we can't get interaction uh, going in between. So, uh, very encouraged there. Um, so, some folks on, on this call have have seen some of the updates. Um, I, I kept the 2020 activities listed uh, in in this presentation because we have been, you know, many folks have been hampered by. By the pandemic, um, but we did right before um, everything kind of got shut down for us in, on the U.S. side. We did conduct a full tie survey at Mauna Kea, um, and um, the the last job that we were going to do, or the first job that got canceled um, when when the pandemic hit, was a survey for us. We were going to do a full site survey at Goddard. That was canceled, um, but the good news, um, or the the silver lining to that cancellation, was that. Um, they actually had an SLR that they'll be replacing soon, uh, fully replacing soon. So they have a new structure on that campus. Uh, we'll have a new instrument on that campus. And uh, we just conducted the recon actually just a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, we'll be conducting a full site survey there in the spring of, of 2022 um, after that installation is complete. So again, a bit of a silver lining to be able to uh, go back to that site with some new instrumentation uh, when we get there. Um, there were also some additional measurements taken at Zeppelin and then um, some reprocessing work done uh, that, that led to improvement. So again, uh, not necessarily a, a full-blown survey, but, but the group has been active trying to make the improvements and, and do the work possible uh, under, under travel restrictions for most of us. Um, we've talked about Fortaleza quite a bit. We've had requests and, and discussions for a number of years. We actually completed recon a few years ago now, and uh, again, a, a, a pretty large impact on, uh, you know, from the pandemic on when, whether or not we'll be able to, to get back there or, or really when we're going to have to see a lot of travel restrictions ease before, before we do that. But uh, hopefully as things subside, then everybody will be kind of picking back up their activity. Um, and then I know the GA uh, reported they were uh, working on uh, organizing a local tie survey at uh, Yerigati. Um, so hopefully, as, as things kind of clean up and, and get moving, we will go. So um, as mentioned, um, we will uh, conduct a, a survey at Goddard uh, in the spring, um, just kind of showed a control network here as we kind of map things out. Uh, it's a very, um, a very full site, lots of, uh, lots of um, pieces of instrumentation, lots of GNSS stations, et cetera. So we will, uh, we were quite happy with our recon efforts and, and uh, we'll be really happy to, to bring together a, a brand new SLR um, once, once we're there. And then also I put a note there, um, I'll kind of discuss it uh, just a second. Um, 
we while we were on site we met with nasa and some of our partners from the u.s army corps of engineers to talk about vlbi antenna deformation uh, this has been a topic that you know this group has been kind of tasked with and asked to see if we could maybe incorporate uh, more data collection to solve the problem uh, of course for us you know many of us being uh, surveyors and field surveyors you know step one is gaining knowledge about the actual you know physical construct of, of the antennas and so it was very good to meet with nasa on site we have a commitment from uh, army corps of engineers to just do a terrestrial laser scan we know that our colleagues some of our colleagues in in europe last year uh, over the last two years i guess um, conducted some testing with um, uh, vlbi scanning with uh, from a uav platform from an aerial platform um, so we'll have some more comparative data sets to, to work with, and, and we're really excited about that. Uh, the other thing that we'll incorporate is uh, deflection of the vertical observations. Um, I gave an update on this um, over uh, a few months ago, I guess. Uh, NGS, uh, we, we had a geodesist here that actually uh, developed a, a mechanism to collect DOV observations using the camera from our uh, robotic total station. Uh, and then it runs through a routine, stores the data, um, and, and basically took a, uh, a time and light installation um, to, to be able to look at the different frames as, as the robotic total station tracked the celestial object. Uh, so it's pretty simple. It just uses a Raspberry Pi and uh, has a small control module. Uh, it's pretty basic at this point. It's uh, prototype number one, let's say, um, and we're hoping to kind of, um, you know, bring this into maybe a, a smaller package at some point. But um, it was uh, very cool uh, to, to get it put together and um, we conducted we've 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 built three of them now we've conducted tests uh, with all three at different sites here mostly in the Virginia uh, US area on the East Coast um, and uh, you know you can see in this picture what we did the uh, historic Astro mark was actually set over here where we're taking GNSS observations but because we're utilizing existing robotic total station, we can actually just shoot, you know, vector ties really quickly and set up on an eccentric point. So again, we're, the reason this is so valuable from a DOV standpoint is we're not having to bring a special piece of equipment out on a full tie survey. We can actually just utilize the robotic total station that we would have there. And as you know, many of these uh, observatories are in logistically challenging places. So not having to pack yet another camera or another box or another tripod is is very important for us. Um, so uh, we're, we're quite excited. Uh, we've also done some side by side testings where testing where we got all three of these instruments on the same location uh, at the same time, observing the same objects, you know, um, in the evenings. And uh, the, that, that way we could compare to make sure that we didn't have any bias between the instruments. And I'm really happy to, um, you know, kind of update not only this testing and, and development, but we just got back uh, from a month in a month in Alaska. We collected over 30 DOV observations with this piece of equipment. We think we'll see um, some improvements in our geoid modeling in Alaska uh, just straight up uh, right away from from the observations taken. So um, really cool picture from one of my colleagues, uh, Ben Gavin, uh, showing the, the Big Dipper in the background there. But uh, this was on an evening real observation in use. Um, so not only have we developed this, um, We've we field tested it and we're quite excited about potentially incorporating it into uh, the spring 2020 survey at Goddard. Um, and then just continuing the techniques that we're using, we're we're working on a manual. Um, our, our colleagues uh, also, you know, released uh, TN39 uh, a few years ago, documenting kind of how they're conducting uh, these these surveys with their most modern techniques. We're we're working on the same here uh, with our U.S. team uh, as well. And, uh, you know, some of you have seen kind of these circle fitting routines that we're using for uh, VOBIs and SLRs. Um, and, and that is with the, the Leica Absolute Laser Tracker, uh, which is um, very precise equipment, um, but, it, but it also makes it, um, you know, very sensitive to, to the environment around it. Um, but uh, the, the the prisms and the the telemetry itself is 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 quite accurate. And what's nice is that you know the accuracy we're we're looking at you know sub millimeter here. This is a circle fitting routine. Um, the the nice thing again is that we can do this analysis while we're in the field. We don't have to pack up and come back to the office as we're using these circle fitting routines and and computing these e either in variant points or trying to find um, centers of GNSS. Um, 
stations, we can do this circle fitting routine on the fly. And if we have um, observations that look out of specification, we can correct it there. We can reobserve. We can make sure we're doing our job before packing, flying home from somewhere, and then realizing that uh, it's it's not as good as as we expected. So we're continuing to. Um, you know, build in new protocols to these software, uh, you know, packages that we use and uh, share the results when we get them. So as mentioned, you know, a few of the things that we really would like to look at coming up, um, the VLBI antenna deformation is very important. We've got multiple members that have kind of studied that and looked at that. Uh, we're going to keep pushing forward with um, DOV observations. We just uh, had a colleague, um, you know, also uh, release some some work that they had done on that. Uh, so that that's really good to try to build, uh, incorporate more data collection into these site surveys to make the product overall better, more informative for everybody that's doing the processing. And then the other discussion that we've talked, I've talked to Mike with this and. Uh, um, and some other colleagues as we look at these sites that are that are close to each other but maybe not close enough to potentially have the precision and accuracy of what we'd expect from from an existing local tie survey um, and whether or not we can potentially include you know really long um, current uh, concurrent uh, GNSS observations to process long baselines uh, maybe deflection of the vertical observations at each, uh, especially if we have multiple pieces of equipment that we could deploy on the same evening. Um, but we're, we're really trying to kind of tease out whether or not we could kind of tie a few of these uh, sites that are that are fairly close within, you know, tens or hundreds of miles, um, but but not necessarily close enough to run a traditional, you know, traverse or vertical leveling line. So that's a that's another piece that we'd like to kind of start investigating as well. So um, certainly appreciate the time. Hopefully that gives you a, a fairly short look at some of the things that we're working on and uh, happy to answer questions or I'm happy if you have colleagues that, um, will, you know, still haven't um, joined up the group or or if you didn't see names listed that should be please reach out to me we'd love to add more folks and as we really kind of bring these things together and hopefully get back to the field um, you know uh, more and more uh, as time passes i think it's going to be a, a very um, encouraging growth of this group so thanks so much